as Broodmother is, is that I've seen this Grimstroke many times from Viking. They do not prioritize the Soulbind synergy at all. Everything is about that ink swell, <laughs> so much blood. which is great, but I, I do think they I lose out on a bit of power because of that. I don't know. I, I personally think the ink swell is basically the ult of the hero. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Soulbind's nice, but like, people don't you, you use it less for the double targets now and more about the leash mechanic. Like, we tend to see it a lot against things like Ember as well. It's really good. A Void Spirit was another one when it was popular. But like four points in ink, so the three seven point seven second AOE stun. Imagine a new hero comes out in Dota, right? And in you don't know anything about them, but you see that there's a three point seven second AOE stun. <laughs> You'd be like, "Whoa, that sounds pretty mental." Like that hero is going to be broken. I mean, my favorite combo to watch is is Axe Grimstroke, because he can blink oh, in and I call, and then right when the call ends, uh, the ink swell goes off. I hey, my favorite one's got to be the center. They just, it's like the same concept, right? But mm -hmm. center, just, just center just has all the burst damage as well. Just, I think this is crazy. Spartan's going to take disruption at level 1 to kill the bounty ring. I actually don't mind this, though, because you know, obviously you normally you want the shadow poison at level 1. When you're playing against these heroes like Pangalea that are probably going to want to cut creep waves and things, this innate ability that Shadow Demon has with the disruption to stop no, there's not many heroes that do it, I and mean, Bane's the other one as well with Nightmare. But uh, he's uh, he's gonna be okay. Yeah. They also have the uh, disruption into blood right combo as well, which is very nice. It's not like when Rubik is forced to get lift and suddenly doesn't have. Oh, well, that sucks. Yeah, because yeah. Ru Rubik's lane <laughs> is really miserable when he has to take lift first a lot of times. And and Phoenix. I've seen this happen a lot where this four or five. I actually really like the five Phoenix from what I've seen of it. Five. Oh, we have to worry about a death here up top. All right. Spartan, he, he broke some records with his last game. He uh, he doesn't want to doesn't want to <laughs> outshine his AA performance. It's fine because it's hit the minute mark and he hasn't died yet. So we're, we're getting there. It's a good. It's a it's strong start. <laughs> He does have disruption, so one would help. It's going to look to uh, pull the big camp here in the top lane. So, uh, lane equilibrium going to be coming towards their direction, especially with the shadow demon having pulled the small camp as well. But then they can just come over and contest it. An easy, uh, safe time for Pango to just get up a little bit of farm and. Really nice to rest coming out onto focus. And he loses his courier. Was it? I to the neutrals. I think it died to the small cap. Yes, I have had that happen before. If your courier is running by right about when the small camp finishes taking your own creeps, they'll still look to attack something. So they'll kill the courier when it goes by. Who gets, do they get any gold on the radiant side for that? I don't actually know. I don't I assume they don't, think but... so, no. I think the courier's just dead. It's mid lane going anyway. I feel like that's the, the important one, right? Yeah, like Brood, like a level <laughs> one puck should be fine. But, but uh, Brood's gonna start getting to that point in the lane now where he's really gonna, you know, go to farm the jungle quicker, yeah, come online really quickly. And I think at that point, Puck's gonna start to have a little bit of panic. Yep. And... She's just opened the garage door. <laughs> but it's not running at you with an ink swell yet. That's, but that's a positive, yeah. So, you know, baby steps. Alright, well... Focus... He's doing okay. He's better than the Ricky. I think this Phoenix has been pretty annoying. Definitely focusing more of the harass onto Celery. Who's out of tangos down to just the south and a very low. Hey, he's, uh, he's not having a good time, is he? Uh, he's going to pop the south. And the, the big thing for them, though, is on this. Uh... Oh, cute. Hang on. Yeah. He's to die. The question is trying. Oh. That's. Uh... Yeah. 
He, that, that's, a, that's definitely a tip if I've ever seen one. Yeah, but he um, was trying to cancer like... the salve in the trees, and uh, celery ran deep enough, didn't cancel it, and then the uh, the phoenix was too low. And then while that happened, Pango died up in the top lane. So they traded one for one. It's something. Yeah, Toby's like, oh, guys, I'm going to feed first blood, and keeps like, don't worry. <laughs> I got you, man. <laughs> What a nice play from the other team. That's, that's best of friends. Mm -hmm. Interesting that uh, he took the second point in stroke at level three instead of the insult on uh, Grimstroke. I mean, it's really good against the Eidolons to try and help clear the wave quickly, but I thought they might have more kill threat if they put the second point in Inkswell. The Skylight's kind of... He's not getting a huge amount of farm down here, but he is getting levels and things, so... He isn't really under threat at the moment. The lane doesn't seem particularly pulled back. And actually, Chad getting some nice bonus lats hits there. He got two Eidolons. Yeah, I, I, I personally think it's really important when you're playing against Enigma that you have the capability to be able to kill the Eidolons in the lane. Because if you're constantly just losing a creep every wave, you're going to fall further and further behind. So you need a way of just, you know, being able to kill those Eidolons to uh, at least try and match up the... Uh, the same level of farm. And keeping an eye on... Three bounty yeah, I want to see how they... Uh, they handle these bounties here. That puck did get... Uh, did get one bottled. So that's look nice the for them. Level difference. I look at the level difference between the puck and the brood now because the brood's able to utilize the jungle. Just a whole level ahead. And we're five minutes into the game. He's level seven. Oh. Yeah, we lost Aramis. Will they go for more? Yeah, Toby cannot hide in the trees, but they don't really have enough to take him out. This is, they've had some really good aggression here up top. Yeah, the, the problem is this Pango Wyvern lane is really passive. Like, they don't offer any kill threat at all. Um, there's not really a huge amount they can do, so it's kind of, they can't really stop this Bloodseeker for farm. They do get the Diddy Ward, though, which is very nice. And we're just going to hit that level 4 mark. Meanwhile, down bottom, Phoenix took out Shad's career and, you know, walks away without dying. It's a nice little pickoff for them. I'm not sure what he had on it. I think he probably had... It was probably on his way back, since he's got two Wraith Bands and boots. Again, getting sat heavy on the Ricky, which I like. Oh, well, when you're playing against this Enigma, you want to be as tanky as you can early on. Not even just the Enigma, the Phoenix as well, but... Yeah, and... See that struggle fake doing a lot of damage. Skylark low, here comes the ink swell. And Ricky gonna pop the stun on him. Great timing there. And Cube in some trouble as well. He's silenced, he cannot dive, and they'll get both kills in the bottom lane. I don't think he expected Celery to have the uh, Phantoms and Breaks leveled up, but uh, Celery did just hit level 4, uh, I think, from the kill, mm -hmm. and then he leveled it. And so he didn't dive away straight away because he didn't think he was under any kind of threat, but yeah, really good punish. And Brew Brothers almost got that Fusal Blade as well, Jesus. Yeah, she's so farmed, and then up top, they jump on to focus. He's very low, but even the silence won't be enough to stop Toby. Oh, he said the top lane is passive. It is passive no longer. They're starting to get in the kills there. It's passive for the start of the lane when they like, because they rely on spell damage up here, right? From Aramis mostly um, with his magical abilities. And unfortunately, yeah, when there's, there's no stay from the Shadow Demon in the lane to help the Bloodseeker, it's, uh, he, he is still keep getting uh, under threat of being run down by this uh, Arctic Burden Splinter Blast. Lots of slow. As far as levels, the Wyvern's looking great. Pretty close to level six. You now about five and a third. Um, Grimstroke, four and a half. Then on the other side, Shadow Demon is five and a half. So pretty much even with the Wyvern. And then Phoenix a little behind on levels. Definitely struggling. And there is the Rupture on to Boom. They want to take out the Spider. See if they can do anything and they'll fall. That's four heroes. Hard for the spider to survive. But Skylark is He's so low. He's, this, he's getting attacked by the spiders. Just manages to survive. That's why there wasn't some assist, but Phoenix, now, though. yeah, Phoenix, he's silenced. He's stunned. One last little jump in. Shad will get the kill. 
So you were talking about the levels on the supports before. Hang on, top lane Spartan. Oh, yeah. Paul gets dived under the tower. I, I want to go back to that point because I think it's really important to talk about. You know, this Grimstroke leash is going to be uh, really big up against the puck as well to stop him from uh, jumping away and jaunting. Um, but the big thing is by the 10 minute mark, Aramis is going to have level 6 without taking the tone. He's just about to get it actually, which means at the 10 minute mark, both the Viking supports are going to be level 6. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, for for uh, family time, at least uh, Shadow Demon's been a little bit greedy. I think he's been stacking the jungle and things. So uh, he's gonna, he's managed to get some levels of his own. Uh, there, yeah, they're going in on him, but he has some TP support this time because he's not so aggressively forward. Here comes Toby with the swashbuckle, slowing down Spartan. Spartan will pay with his life. A great uh, turn. A tier one. Oh, there's uh, definitely a tier one tower here with all the spiders as well. Yeah, I, great rotation by Toby. I think that, that little extra burst of swashbuckle damage kind of took the puck by surprise. Uh, I think he might have been fine apart from that. Yeah, and there yeah. is a defusal on Boom. He's using oh. it on Skylark. Skylark has the black hole, but Boom just waiting for that damage to tick him down. How bad does it feel if you're a funny time and all of a sudden you're in the, the most important game and you have to win to try and reach the, uh, the, uh, the playoffs, all of a sudden you get 10th big brooders. And it's like, well, and you know, this happens in the first game. And you even banned the Meepo. They even yeah, yeah. banned the Meepo. They were like, listen, we Aramis. got this. All right, well, <laughs> Spartan is returning to his old ways. Now it feels pretty bad. And Taki's going to get run down here by the Rolling Thunder. <laughs> He's just dodging, like <laughs> hugging the corner. <laughs> and here comes Focus. He wants to use the rupture, he, so he has enough vision. Will rupture Toby? Yeah, there's no, there's no way to stop it. Yeah, big kill, but unfortunately for them, the Broodmother's still doing Broodmother things. The tier one actually didn't die before. I'm really surprised. They ended up going for the Skylark instead, I guess. Well, they have to, uh, they also have to work on Spartan's kill per minute. He fell behind. De death per That's minute. true. Oh, might get yeah, the Brood Courier. Nope. Loses vision. And he's going for this Diffuse Lags build on the Brood. I thought he might go BKB instead, but... That's when you're playing against, like, Rupture, Black Hole, you know, the Purge on the Shadow Demon as well. The BKB kind of loses Skylark value a little bit. Skylark Bottom, he's getting diffused and he's caught out. They are rotating and he has the Black Hole so he can turn around, but he's so low here, so he'll fall anyway. Um, that's... Is that the first Black Hole usage as well? Yes. I think it is, right? Yeah, it's the first that's, one we've uh, seen. That's a sad one. It's, it feels bad. As you were saying, they're in this game. It's a game they need to win to survive. They get 10th pick brooded and their first black hole. Oh, so much feels bad man happening. Brood mother just pulling further and further in front of her. Yeah, I, um... net worth wise, <laughs> she is uh, she's way top of the charts, far ahead of the puck, very far ahead of the Bloodseeker. It's not just the net worth as well, they're right, like the Brew Mother's two left balls ahead of the park. Yeah. They're gonna fight for it, another kill here. Focus in trouble. We're going to continue contributing to that level in net worth lead on the Brood Mother. So the, the problem I have for Family Time is that they don't again top of the, they don't have a hero that just goes in, right? Like the Bloodseeker doesn't want to just run in and tank all the spell. Uh, they kind of reliant on the puck being the one that forces the fights with Dream Coil. Um, and they have Egg as well, which is nice with the Dream Coil, but it needs to be like a perfect scenario for all their spells to go off. I will say though, I told you I cast this lineup, sim you know, something similar to this last time. Mm -hmm. They ended up getting like a four-man black hole at like the 15-minute mark or something that completely changed the game. So there is there is still hope yeah, when, uh, if they when Skylight... Get... If they get Black Hole, they get a nice egg off. They've got a, a Bloodseeker fighting through all of that, laying down Blood Rites, a Puck Coil. They have the team fight, but they have not had the space or time to make use of it yet. We were talking about support levels, and their supports are under leveled. There's a Rupture on Celery. They might be able to get a Revenge kill here, but he's delaying them and allowing the Ricky to just run away. Shad choosing not to use that Ink Swell. Like, it's not a, an awful death on the Grimstroke though, because you force all three cores to just be in the same area of the map at once, right? Like, it's not not a good death, but it, it's not awful. Yep, and uses a rupture as well, so... 
Can't be used on one of your own cores for a little bit. And what is Shad's items looking like? He's getting pretty close to that defusal, so they will have double defusal. Oh, coil here on to Toby. He's got a mech, though. Yeah, I, I think when you play uh, this kind of game as the Pangolier, and it's like, well, it's really difficult for me to ever get a good rolling thunder off here. I'm playing against Rupture, Dream Coil, and Black Hole. I think you have to itemize to just be like utility for your team. Um, so he's gone mech. He might go Basher as well, which I think is really good this game because of, you know, canceling Black Hole, good against the Puck. I also think you might just end up going Pipe as well at some point. Try and just be, you know, as, as tanky as he possibly can. And Celery and Boom sitting in the mid lane looking to see who they can catch out with Aramis here as well. So there is the ultimate onto the puck holding him in place and now he's silenced an ink swell too to keep him there. The disruption will give him a little bit of time. Now the leash is out. There's no black hole. Black hole is up in one more second. Boom is falling incredibly low here. They take out the spider. Can they find more? Yeah, really good positioning by Spartan. That ends up dying instead of his puck, but, you know, 100% worth it. That's uh, a great save from him. And they end up turning around and getting the brew kill as well, so even better. And now with the uh, Winter's Curse on cooldown for a little bit, Brood is dead. If they can find an opening to use this black hole, and they're going on focus now, Puck oh, is silenced. I think they're going to lose the puck. Yeah. Ah... Uh... That feels really bad because that's going to give Shadish Diffusal Blade as well coming out on the career. So he has the smoke screen with the Diffusal Charges. Well, they're not Charges anymore. God, that's been a while, but... Um, <laughs> Here's uh, yeah, a like, disruption a... over here from the Shadow Demon. Wants to silence up this Grimstroke. Doing a lot of damage. Hard for Grim to get out. They have Egg Shad low as well. And there's a Black Hole was oh. used. And uh, that's catching Toby, holding him in place. Meanwhile, the Bloodseeker beating down this Wyvern, and Boom is back into the fight. What can they do? Egg is popped and does not accomplish anything. We're stunning. Well, they got the Ricky kill. Uh, did the Egg get the Ricky kill, or did they already have it? Um, I, I'm not sure. In this coil mid as well. well that's bad. Ugh. Oh. Onto the brood. Yeah, that fight got pretty spread out, so I, I missed the Ricky side of it. I was I was watching the Toby versus Skylark side of it. I can't believe you didn't catch all three fights at once. I'm so disappointed. I know. Just... <laughs> Worst obsing ever. How <laughs> dare they fight in so many places? It's so inconsiderate. Do you think we should pause and all chat and ask them to just be a little bit more considerate? Oh gosh, I don't know if you were casting back in the days, but like old Join Dota League used to have casters accidentally pausing all the time. And I yeah. live in perpetual fear of doing that. Like I will not touch the keyboard while I cast. The only time I've ever done it, it wasn't in a... Uh, like a proper cast or anything. I was just watching one of my friend's games from a lobby mm -hmm. um, from one of the like the face it games and uh, yeah, it was I did it accidentally. And I was like, oh my god. Thank god. That wasn't an important game. <laughs> I hate like, ah, it's it's stressful though. It's very stressful. I was uh... you're really worried. You have to unblind it. That's the, the power play. That's true. Yeah, I guess as a caster you absolutely never need it. I don't know. I think I'm using one of JJ's uh, casting presets in my auto config because I don't know when I set it up, but I hit one button and the camera does most of the work for me. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe pause is unbound. I'm not going to test it. <laughs> yeah, definitely not the time. But it might be. That would be a smart thing to put into that. <laughs> I actually think uh, uh, Family Time have come back into this game quite well, by the way. This mm -hmm. uh, this park has been doing a really good job. I think I'm pretty sure this is one of Untaki's favorite heroes. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll look up after. I, I can look up at some point if it goes a bit quiet. He's going to go for this regen rune here. Cinder does end up denying it. Yeah, he doesn't even get to punish the Grimstroke for his insolence. Just runs away. Uh, and uh, I like uh, Celery's skill build as well on the Scrimstrike. I think he'll end up skipping the uh, level 10 talent as well. 
it's really important you get this third point in Phantoms and Brace up against these heroes like Puck, you know, Shadow Demon as well. It's really good against to stop the save coming through. Looks like they want to fight Phoenix on the front line, positioning to go on Shad, but Aramis in the trees means that, you know, they can counterplay this. And there it is, the curse coming out, holding everyone back. Now the coil on the other side of the fight, Grimstroke will fall. Ricky very low as well, and the egg used. So Ricky's down, Grimstroke is down. And they're chasing for more, looking for Aramis. He does get the blink away. Puck has the coil, though. Such high mobility from Puck here. Should miss the silence, but here comes Boom. Brood in with a vengeance. Can he get anything done here? Nataki has the jump away. The All the babies died. He's just contributing to Puck's stake on fund. Oh, okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. I, I, I'm not really understanding. Like Viking, they had this really big advantage, right? At like the, the 10 minute mark, 12 minute mark or so. And they kind of just split up. Like, oh, hang on, bot lane. Sky like, oh, he dodges the rolling thunder. Gives him the knees. And Skylark, he has Black Hole if he wants to turn this. He's got to wait for more heroes to show up. He's disrupted, oh. saving some time. Will they be able to turn this? And Shad pretty low on to the Ricky. The Leech from the Grimstroke, though, doing a lot of work here to slow people down. The Phoenix falls. There wasn't an egg on him. Here is the Black Hole used on just the Brood, but Toby from the other side. Enigma getting low. Brood didn't really take enough damage there. He is coiled, so he cannot continue to chase onto this Enigma. And then the Winter's Curse got him holding everyone in place. Now, boom, back into the fight. He's low HP, but he doesn't care. He's a Brood. Four dead. And Viking. I, they use the advantage. You, that's what you wanted them to do. Yeah. I, I was literally about to say this is the first time in ages. It feels like they've actually grouped up and tried to make a play, like as far. And they find the Celery somehow just gets an ultra kill. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure how that's happened, but uh, it's quite impressive. He... I'm going to call that an ultra steal rather than an ultra kill. That but might be wise. Him, him last game. It's not good enough, Celery. <laughs> well, now he, he's got 1,700 gold. He can consider buying an entire item. Not just a bracer, yeah. not just a cloak, a whole item. Axe rush, go. Uh, not that whole item. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Feels bad. <laughs> Boom almost has a BKB, which will be absolutely lovely. Uh, they've... Family Time have been doing a really good job of limiting positioning in the fight with the Blood Rite. Oh. Yeah, the Lost Phoenix top. With the Blood Rite and the Coil, they've made it really hard for Viking to get some good positioning off and actually execute all together. So BKB is is going to negate that quite a bit. So I, I feel really bad for this puck because I think he's really he's stuck in a really difficult situation where he, he kind of he wants to stay gone because they don't have enough damage on their team. But he also knows his brood's gonna have BKB soon. So I I, I think he really needs an axe as well. But there's just so many things they need, right? Like this blood seek is not really farmed that well. Like he, he's got mail he's going BKB, but I mean, like he's, he's not outputting a whole amount of damage, right? He can't just run into the Broodmother and fire. Mm -hmm. So, what? Where is their damage coming from in these coming from in these like mid-game fights? It feels like they're so reliant on this magic damage at the moment that's been able to get them through. That now these BKBs are going to be coming out. Like Ricky's close to getting his as well, about a thousand gold off. I really struggle to see how Family Time are going to be able to cope with that. They have to have like the perfect fights. Family time, when we saw them doing really well and having an advantage, were picking off the Grimstroke very quickly. Though so if they can actually take out Celery so he doesn't get an ultra kill, maybe that's just True. the Puck's goal is the Dagon for the fast kill onto Grimstroke. Maybe you take out the Wyvern really quickly. They've actually, they've almost bursted Shad right at the beginning of the fights too. So they're just missing that little bit of extra bonus. If they can get that, that'll be really important. Well, there's a rolling thunder. Blink Dagger from the Puck, and now Aramis is here. Ooh. Puck is just so mobile with the extra jump added to Waning Rift. Smart. I thought Aramis was going to use the curse that, but decided against it. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Maybe they were just afraid of um, that tier 2 tower. The counterplay. They know that Black Hole is up. 
And they were smoked by their own family time. They found nobody on the bottom half of the map. Yeah, and this is a, a dead Spartan. So family time will lose one right away. Doesn't have buyback to come into this Roche fight. Puck just... The baby. Yeah, more, more for that Dagon fund. Crowdfunding is very popular these days, so Brute just wants to be a part of it. And now they're jumping oh, onto the puck. Yeah, there was uh, holding him into the uh, the smoke cloud. Puck has to buy back. They want to make something Wait, happen this fight. There's no blink dagger on Enigma, so he has to run in and hit the black hole of his life. And there. And if uh, Boob just holds on the other side of the pit here, he should be fine anyway. Yeah, Good there's soul a bite. Yeah, soul bite on them, keeping them back, making this so hard for either the Bloodseeker or the Enigma to do anything. Enigma falls to the spider. He's down, and egg now Boom hitting down. onto the egg. That egg probably won't make it off. It won't. Puck can't do anything here. And Boom disrupted, and I think saved there. Honestly. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, that was a save from the Shadow Demon, right? I don't think Boom would have died anyway, but like I think he was hoping that the illusions would finish off the brood kill, but he had a tiny little bit of insatiable hunger duration to heal up off of them. And of and course he still has again, that ages. So. Oh, this is a buyback puck, yeah. Yeah. But won't find him. To hide in the base for now. So, strong fight from Viking. Finally getting to take down that egg. Ah, and that was the big uh, BKB reveal from the Broodmother as well. Ricky has his 10 second one now though as well. So there's a, it's a, it's a two pronged attack. Unfortunately, they're going to have to be defending now. Puck has switched over from the Dagon build and is going for the eggs now that they've seen the BKB on the Brood. I think it's so important because otherwise the Brood just has a completely free fight with the BKB. But even though like they have the coil with the axe, I, I still don't know where the damage is coming from, right? It goes back to this point of how are they going to be killing people in like, the duration of the coils and things. Because it's not about keeping yourself in the game. At some point, you have to try and kill it, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't, know, I don't know how, how they're going to do it. They really... It's a difficult one. They need the black hole on top of the Midnight Pulse with a Bloodseeker there in the fight and they haven't been able to they haven't been able to hit a black hole on more than I think maybe two heroes is the most that we've seen for sure but the, the problem becomes if you're so reliant on killing the Broodmother with black hole not only is that a bad situation in itself but he always has the Aegis like he also has it sorry so if you can kill him once great but how are you gonna kill him the second time Spartan they lost him again Poor guy. Yeah. Well, I guess, I mean, you have to you have to delay, wait for the Aegis to run out, probably have your supports in dangerous positions like that. I mean, Puck is farming the enemy jungle. Focus is, is taking the Radiant jungle outpost. They're, they're trying to dodge fights, which means they'll probably continue to get picked off, just like uh, Spartan did. Or Skylark yeah, did. Sure. They, they have no choice but to dodge fights, and... I will say the thing is for, for Viking is it's a difficult game to go high ground. Enigma, Bloodseeker, Blood, right? Like Phoenix, the Coil. It's, it's not easy at all. So I think what they're going to carry on doing what they're doing here. And oh my god, there's so many spiders. <laughs> they, all, they all die, but they get the tower to half HP. And there's the BKB from Focus. Forced to do that to even attempt to get away, but there's so much right click just from the Pango and the Ricky. Phoenix doing what he can to keep him alive. And he'll try to TP out. They don't quite have the damage. Cannot believe they had that escape there. And now there's Boom. He's a spider. He has no mana left. He's killing his own illusions just to lifesteal. And will now BKB and run. Oh my god. This is the spider with ink so long that you'd be scared of. I hate this set with the uh, BKB active. It looks so ridiculous. It's giant and creepy and the legs are so long. <laughs> Why are they so it's not even long? That it's the way they move as well. <laughs> They're like all over the place. All right, well, I have a new resolution. Sorry, everybody watching, but if the Broodmother's BKB'd, we're not watching her. <laughs> Mo, it's your job to radio cast anything happening with the BKB <laughs> Broodmother. I'll see what I can do. Okay. I, uh, my playback, my playcasting might need some work. But, uh, <laughs> waste a bit. There you go. Oh gosh, she, she is very low on mana. May have to swap that soul ring in to do anything here. 
We have mana boots and anyone supports really do not buy mana boots very often anymore. Yeah, and if I do most of the time, I just end up get, having to dismantle it to build like a Mayfield lens or something anyway. Yeah. So you end up with the only way to get mana <laughs> back is top. Pango. They get the tower. Well, I mean, this is what family time have to do. They have to position aggressively, cut waves, find the farm that they can, delay the game for what? Uh... <laughs> yeah, this is my problem. Like, at what point are they going to win the game? I'm really unsure. They find a repair kit. Okay, this is good. Look at this top lane. They're like, oh my god, thank god. Get that repair kit down, boys. This is this is it. <laughs> I guess you can go for the uh, Dream Coil Rapid Fire and just have Puck do all of your damage. Sure. <laughs> you he, sound has, skeptical. You take him, well, he hasn't taken the damage talent. So he can't do damage. You sound skeptical. He could get a Divine Rapier. <laughs> I could, yeah. Now they're smoked up. They want to see if they can make something happen. What? Okay, the Aegis has timed out, so they've been uh, paying attention to that, waiting for the Aegis to disappear. And now, seeing if they can grab a fight, and they'll find the spider right spider. here. Now, Spider, he is BKB'd. I am not oh. a fan of this. That is a very instantly <laughs> dead Shadow Demon. And a jump in from the Ricky now onto the Enigma. Skylark in a lot of trouble. He has the Black Hole, but he can't uh. use it. And now the Egg to fall as well. No buyback on the Phoenix. Uh, oh. That was... A brave, brave egg. Um, unfortunately, this is what I mean. They were asking for the planet to align last game. It didn't happen, and it feels like they need it to happen again in this game. Yeah, and they're just diving into the base onto Focus. He has the BKB, but these bashes from Toby making life pretty miserable. They might be Ricky? able to take out Ricky. He's very low. They have tower vision on him, and there's the black hole, but instantly it's just canceled by the Winter's Curse. There's nothing that this Enigma can do this game. And there's a dead, yeah, that's a dead die. Is that a die back or did he respawn and then die? I think he just respawned after that other fight before. Yep. He just instantly dies again. He did, he did. And uh, Puck trying to do what they can, cutting the creep wave, being annoying, just delaying on the other side. Do they have any repair kits left on the die? Um, they, they do. But getting in range to use moment. it sounds scary uh, too. You, you gotta pick it up here. He doesn't have dive, oh no. And this, I mean, look at, look at Puck on the other side trying to do anything. The Ricky catches them and Puck will die. That's no buyback. Puck dead for a long time. I think even in 10 seconds when Puck gets buyback, back won't have the gold for it. Phoenix doesn't have the egg. Boom, doing so much damage running forward. This this BKB, are they going to fountain dive? No, no, the disruption is enough to discourage the fountain diving. That would maybe be some planets aligning for uh, family That's time. True. If, if Boom dives the well and dies, that could be helpful. I always love when uh, the other team dives my fountain and just end up throwing the game. Yeah. Uh, keep has egg here. Yeah. I don't know how much he's just gonna do. Boom can attack the egg and it's now dead and then the Winter's Curse holding Skylark in place. He doesn't have the black hole even if he wasn't dead. There's a GG called as well. Unfocused. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, they have that like really good 18 to 22 minute mark 